This is Building Science. We have looked at the innovation of the CHP unit and its ability to power and heat a facility or home, as well as the use of propane to fuel that technology. And while remarkable in theory, is it right for you? In this episode, we shed light on the unit footprint, maintenance, and the integrations of this technology in existing structures. So it's a little intimidating in the beginning because I don't come from, come from a construction background and we had a large building and there's a lot of components. So the first thing to do is contact Yanmar uh, and kind of see what they had to say about integrating the system. We just placed a call, let them know what we wanted to do. Within a couple of weeks, someone came down, uh, told us the whole process that'd be involved and explained how that system could be implemented with the building and explain just kind of how easy it was. Now, forgive my denseness here, but this isn't as simple as just like how I have propane on my grill. Is it I just hook up the propane and it goes, right? Well, Adam, it's a little bit different than that, but it's exactly the same as the hookup would be for a traditional propane appliance in your home. That's one thing that people would commonly think about is, well, I've, I've got a tank, I've already got propane appliances, do I need extra infrastructure to get it running? The answer is no. It'll actually hook up the same way a normal propane appliance would that's in your home. Propane, in, in essence, is going to fuel and run this entire thing for any, any type of structure. That is correct. We recommend a thousand gallon tank. That will handle one month of complete runtime without any stopping. Your MEP, or mechanical electrical plumbing engineer who designs into houses for the architect, is the one who would design the system in. So this is spec'd in well before any construction process. What about retrofit? Is this system possible in a retrofit or a remodel situation? Yeah, as a matter of fact, most of our installations are on retrofits where a generator has failed or the boiler has failed, instead of going back with traditional equipment, they're actually putting in the cogeneration system because they do get that free power. By design, this is supposed to be it's low, supposed to low be maintenance. Low maintenance, 10,000 hour interval is great. Um, so even in the event that you had someone who didn't know how to perform the maintenance, getting someone out to do it would be very easy and very few and far between. Our engine runs at 1,700 RPMs consistently when it's running. So if you ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, however many hours that is, which is 8,760 hours, we can run that no problem. We have maintenance intervals at 10,000 hours. We're talking about maintenance every 14 months. Maintenance is essentially like changing your oil, your spark plugs, and your filter. With homes being built closer and closer to one another, the noise of this unit is not only worth noting, it's a major benefit. In fact, the decibel level of a CHP is not much higher than my voice is right now. I came in here, is it running now? Actually, the system, it is running, and it operates at about 54 decibels when it is uh, at full operation. So, right that, now- That's a dishwasher. That's, that's maybe a dishwasher. A, right. right now, this is probably about 60 decibels, just to give anybody listening a rough idea of how loud that is, and that's pretty quiet. I would probably have a few pieces of advice for somebody looking into this unit, or any CHP unit, and that is, Number one, do your homework, uh, do some research, see the scope of the CHP's capacity, and see what it can do for you. Second, it involves some additional hardware to the building, so it's not just going to be a complete plug-and-play system. And lastly, most importantly, bring in an engineering team for your electrical and mechanical to make sure the systems are installed correctly from the get-go. The engineering and design of the CHP is complicated and sophisticated, but the reasons for use are simple. Cost savings, energy efficiency, and security of constant power. From on-site generation, waste heat recovery, and technology in place to reduce the carbon footprint by as much as 50% over conventional means. The science behind the CHP is remarkable. For Building Science, I'm Adam Grubb.